Hello and welcome to an exclusive recorded award presentation of the 38th Miami Film Festival. Thank you for joining us and thank you to our premier level sponsors, Knight Foundation, Telemundo, Miami-Dade County, American Airlines, and NBC6. My name is Lauren Cohen and I'm the festival's co-director of programming. And my name is Jay LaPlan and I am the festival's executive director and co-director of programming. Today we are presenting Miami Film Festival's Art of Light Award to actress Andra Day for her astonishing performance in the United States versus Billie Holiday. The Art of Light Award is presented to cinema artists whose outstanding work shines new wonders on the continuing evolution of motion pictures. Before we quickly continue, I would like to make an advanced introduction. Joining us in a few minutes will be Clayton Davis, the film awards editor from our media trade partner Variety. Clayton will have an in-depth conversation with Andrew Day directly following this award presentation. Andrew Day's song, Rise Up, has taken on a life of its own. The song has become an anthem for the Black Lives Matter movement, providing the audio heartbeat for activists and change makers across the world. A Grammy-nominated musician for her full-length debut album, Cheers to the Fall, Day collaborated with Common on the song Stand Up for Something from the Marshall official soundtrack album and film. The song went on to be nominated for Best Original Song at the 2018 Academy Awards. After her immense achievements in music, Andrew Day now brings the same fire to her motion picture debut. Playing the legendary Billie Holiday, Andrew embodies Holiday through her stunning recreation of her beautiful, beloved, sultry sound and a haunting performance that recalls all the pain, defiance, and strength of a woman who would not be silenced. There are only a handful of film debuts in the history of movies that have achieved legendary status, and this tremendous performance is sure to be another one of them. Let's take a look at a scene from the movie. Why don't you ever sing Strange Fruit? Strange Fruit. I gotta be pretty high to sing that one. Never heard you sing it. It's a song about important things, you know. Things that are going on in the country. I don't think people know I care about those things. Most of my other songs are just about love. Well, love is important too, right? You know, one day, I'm gonna quit the drinking and get off that stuff too. <laughs> Maybe go to one of those hospitals, you know, like Judy Garland, those movie stars. For her unforgettable performance in the United States versus Billie Holiday, Miami Film Festival is so proud to present Andra Day with our Art of Light Award. Hello, peace and blessings, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you to everyone at the Miami Film Festival. Uh, I'm just so appreciative and just so grateful uh, to you all and for you all for this award. Uh, you know, and, and I just want to say, I want to say thank you so much to Lee Daniels, to Susan Laurie Parks, to Tasha Smith, Tom Jones, my acting coach and dialect coach, and to the entire cast. You know, I, I'm so appreciative of you guys recognizing my performance, but I just want everybody to know that that performance is, is an amalgamation of, of, of Lee and myself and, and Billie Holiday and, and the production and SLP and Trevante and Garrett and Tyler and, and all of my co-stars, Divine, Miss Lawrence, uh, uh, Natasha. So um, I'm just so appreciative to all of you and appreciative to all of them and, um, and just so much love. I feel so full right now. So thank you. Thank you very much for recognizing our effort as a, as a family to bring this story to life. Hello, everyone. My name is Clayton Davis. I'm the Film Awards Editor at Variety. Thank you very much for joining me today for this beautiful conversation with a beautiful woman, Miss Andrew Day. Hello. Congratulations <laughs> on your award. Thank you very much. And with a beautiful man, as we established earlier. Oh, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> the glow, the glow. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I just need to try to keep up a little bit with you because you, you're always looking fly. Uh, how, first of all, like, how are you? You, 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 are, you, are, you are you on cloud nine right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. It just, it's, and it's, it's amazing to be recognized. And it's also amazing to be recognized because it just, it just makes me so grateful. It makes me spiritually, it makes me grateful to God. It makes me grateful to Lee and to my co-stars and, you know, the production and everybody who just supported and believed and, <laughs> and who put up with, with my shit during what I call my lady day years <laughs> from like the end of 2017 to the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. 
So I, lo I love that you have dates for it, though. That like yeah. you know yeah. the, the time period. Real time period. The cigarettes yeah. had to go it's like away. the ice. It's like the ice age. It's just like right <laughs> in that clock in that zone. Oh, like some that. people might describe it as the dark ages. Some <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um. So listen, like. All right, let, let's let's call spade a spades because you 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 really greedy these days. So <laughs> you, you got this like fantastic singing career, right? And then you were like, all right, I'm just gonna go do a movie real quick. Do my <laughs> first one. I'm gonna play Billy Holiday, and then I'm just gonna uh, wipe the floor with anyone that <laughs> can do it in the future. So talk about the the stress level first of knowing that you were gonna do it, and then your preparation in actually doing it. Yeah, I mean, the, st the stress level was so high that it was a no, you know, <laughs> for me, it was not like, okay, I'm going to do this. It was no, I was like, this is a terrible idea. At the time, I guess I, I was not an actor, you know, and so <laughs> I was like, why would I go do, you know, <laughs> with my manager, I'm like, just say this to yourself. Why would I go be the lead in a Billie Holiday movie? I'm not an actor, you know. Um, and then I love Billie Holiday, right? So I just, I kept in my mind, I kept thinking, oh my God. I love Billie Holiday. I love Diana, Diana Ross, <clears throat> Audrey McDonald. So I said, people are going to be like, oh, wow, Billie Holiday so wonderful. Oh, look at that. You know, um, uh, uh, Diana Ross is so wonderful. And Lady Sings the Blues. Oh, my God. Audrey McDonald, you know, on Broadway. And then they're going to be like, oh, man, you remember that one time Andrew Day tried to do it? That was what kept. I mean, I was like, that's how it's going to go. I promise you that's how it's going to go. Yeah. So I was really trying to talk myself out of it, Lee out of it even. And actually... Lee didn't even want to work with me because <laughs> he was like, nope, she's not an actress. So our first meeting was just the two of us sitting there eating hors d'oeuvres, wondering why we're both there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but he saw something in me. He saw, as he says, he saw a perfectionist and I saw that in him. He let me know at the meeting and then with the script that it wouldn't just be a retelling of Lee, Lady Sings the Blues because I didn't want to do that because who was going to try and redo the incomparable Diana Ross in that movie? But also as a fan of Billie Holiday's, it was not the full true story of of, of her contribution as a strong black woman. And so, and um, Lee was gonna tell that story. Um, Susan Laurie Parks wrote this amazing script based off of this great book, Chasing the Screen by Johan Hari. And, um, and as a fan, I was like, oh wow, the world will finally be able to say thank you to her and really recognize her as the great godmother of civil rights, which is what she was. She reinvigorated the movement with her singing of Strange Fruit in defiance of the government. So uh, I was very, very excited and incentivized by, by the vindication of her legacy. Awesome. So, and this is coming from someone like, you know, that my, my mom and my sister had a Billie Holiday poster in our house growing up, oh, a frame, like cool. artwork oh, that wonderful. was just like, there was, it was around, but you know, I, I knew her music cause you know, um, I'm half black, so I knew, right. ooh, yeah. I knew Billie <laughs> Holiday, right? Right, of course. <laughs> but, but, but I didn't know the story at all. Like right. I like, like, I mean, Black history, by the way, it, that just, just always shows the absence of Black history in, in education because mm -hmm. you don't know anything about yeah. it. How familiar with you were you with this story and uh, everything that she had gone through? Yeah, I was familiar with the government going after her because I was such a huge fan of Billie Holiday. But I, I was also not surprised at all that most people don't know that story because the reality is you were never supposed to know that story. You know what I mean? And so... Um, you know, this idea that it's like, oh, wow, how was this kept from us? I'm like, oh, it was kept from us the same way a lot of things sort of that they've done in the darkness, right? The FBI or the FBN and the FBI in her case, Harry J. Anslinger, J. Edgar Hoover were masterful at, you know what I mean? Which was, um, uh, I think in order to continue a system of oppression, that one of the keys to doing that is to controlling the narrative, you know? So if you can take black narratives and you can eliminate them completely or you can suppress them or you can change them, um, then you think this, the, the system is allowed to persist. And I think, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to continue hating people when you know, or well, some people just can, but <laughs> it's a little more difficult when you know the depth of someone's struggle and then the breadth of their contribution and their triumph, you know? And uh, so I think a big part of moving forward as a society and why Billy ties to this time is that we never knew her story. And she is one of so many black stories and marginalized community stories uh, that have been changed. And the narrative has been shifted to sort of limit our contribution and our presence. And um, so I think in order to move forward, we have to continue to do that with, with our stories. And this story is, it's like this year, 
became, I don't say an awakening, but people are becoming aware of black struggle like it just got here. It's been a very interesting kind of time Maybe. that people have like sort of <laughs> noticing things. But this yeah. is one of many stories that are that are going through the 60s, civil rights, like just really showing that this, how, not even that this happened, but how it just mirrors exactly some of the same things we're still seeing today. Absolutely. Because civil rights is 60 years ago. That, that, that's beyond before my time. And mm-hmm. like you watch this and now you're like, what, what big difference is there? How did yeah. you take that into getting into her skin and then understanding her? I mean, so I, I took all of that, right? You know, I'm still, I'm a black person. And then in, in, in more specifically, I'm a black woman living in America, you know, and that I always say comes sort of with its own inherent invisibility and, um, and, and, you know, a sort of people always talk about black women are black women are so strong and they're so resilient. It's like, well, yeah, we are, but we shouldn't have to be this strong. You know what I mean? We are because we are. But the reality is, we are shouldering a lot of people's burdens and yeah. and causes and fights. Um, you know, in the shadows. You know what I mean? And and a lot of our issues are not looked at and they're not paid attention to. So I've, of course, as a as a woman, as a black woman, I brought that into Billie Holiday's story. That's a through line with both of us. You know, um, it's, it's, it was obviously still different to to a degree in certain ways in the '30s, '40s, and '50s. But but um, but that invisibility, that need to be free, that need to break out of these boxes, um, these impossible expectations that you know, that the, the the mainstream society and even sometimes in our own community place on us, you know, uh, just the silence, this idea that we're not allowed to talk about our issues. We've got to put it on the back burner so we can deal with other people's struggles first. It is a constant silencing of our voices. So that was a huge part of it. I had to bring my own personal familial trauma, which interestingly enough, I didn't like because for the lynching scene, for instance, I, I I had to do that because I had to take the shell of my research and inform it with a real human being, which would be me. But in the lynching scene, it bothered me that I had to pull from any familial trauma because a lynching in and of itself is, is, a, is a horrible sight, you know, and is, is um, it's so shattering, you know what I mean? Uh, but when pulling from family trauma and, and, you know, familiar issues for me, it was like, wow, we're, we're, I'm too familiar with this. We as a community are too familiar with this magnitude of loss. You know what I mean? Also with an even greater degree of triumph, but still a lot of loss, a lot of tragedy, you know, scientists obviously have discovered recently that black people have been born with PTSD in their DNA, you know? So I think that, um, yeah, I had to reconcile that in myself as well too, being like, this should be enough, but we're so familiar and we've gotten desensitized to a degree. So it sort of woke me up to say, I don't want to, I don't want the, I don't want to normalize this in any way, shape or form. And I need to check myself anytime that I am, you know. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that. Um, in looking at your own career trajectory and you said, you know, yourself, you're like, I, w- I wasn't an actress, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you ever thought about it or, or like, you know, obviously you've been drawn to music your whole life, but I, I go deeper. Like you're drawn to art, right? You, yeah, you are yeah. drawn to art. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a big advocate for education in underserved communities, especially black communities and, and Latino communities that yeah. can't find access to Hollywood on their screens because they don't see a lot of themselves there. Can you remember like the moment where you said to yourself, I, I can do this. Like, mm-hmm. like this, this is, this is me. I, 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 I'm strong enough and I can do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say that uh, actually Billie Holiday had, had a lot to do with that. You know, I, I first was introduced to her music at 11 years old at a performing arts school. So I agree with you. I am a huge advocate of arts education in our communities, um, especially when you grow up in a community that, you know, you has a lot of, you know, gang activity. And, and But this is not to say that these people are bad or villains, because I, I, I'm, I'm always hesitant to even talk about it. Because people were like, oh, God, it's so dangerous. And you grew up in the kid. No, I grew up with these students. They went to school with me. <laughs> they were kids trying to survive, you know, to make a name for themselves and, and, and leave their mark, you know, on, on in life, you know, especially with the impossible circumstances that are placed on us as a community on black and brown and marginalized communities. So I went to school with these people, but I saw what an arts program and what an arts instructor and someone who cared about these kids potential I saw the vision change, you know, in young people, even in myself, like, oh, 
you know, the options all of a sudden are open up. You realize your own potential, you know, so I'm a huge proponent of that. Um, but I was introduced to her at 11 and I heard a song called Sugar and then I was also heard Strange Fruit. And Sugar actually changed for me this idea of what a great singer was, right? Because we have our great singers. We have our Whitney Houston's and our, you know, Mariah Carey's and <clears throat> Aretha Franklin and so on and so forth. And that was always, it had to be a big voice and it had to be, you know, Billie Holiday was like, I mean, she was never in a rush, right? You know what I mean? It was never pressed to really do too much, you know, and, but she had her own sound, her own tone, her own phrasing. So she helped me to eventually own my own voice and to say, okay, I have a tone and a sound and a unique contribution to this as well. And then with Strange Fruit, it prostrated me. So I says, when I heard that, even though I, at that young age, I didn't know exactly what she was talking about. All I knew was that whatever I made, I wanted it to stop people in their tracks the way she did me. Even if it was just a simple love song or a breakup song, or I wanted whatever it is, something about it to get people to kind of go like this, you know, and listen or to play it back. Well, what'd she say? You know what I mean? That. So, um, yeah, she really sort of just moved me to own my voice and to just have intention, you know, with what it is that I'm doing. And as you find yourself now, I don't say at this crossroads because it's not a crossroads because you still love music, mm -hmm. but now you have this other talent that people are, <laughs> pe are going to be like, I right, thank you for this. I hope and so. You we'll have to do like a second movie to like, no. Yeah, sure. I, 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 people are going to be like, so what are you going to do next? You know, are yeah. you gonna get big out of you next, you know, do you see your future in the acting sphere? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Uh, is this a new, is this a new possibility for you? Is it going to coincide with, with music? Uh, yeah, I mean, it'll definitely coincide with music, right? Because I think music is probably even the way I got into this, you know, like, as Lee says, through the music as well. So, but I, at first, when I was doing this movie, I was like, nah, this is the first and the last. <laughs> because it took everything. It took everything. Everything. Yeah. Took everything, you know, even health to a degree, which I'm still sort of rehabilitating my vocal cords, you know. But um, which was worth it. I would not. I would not change uh, the way that Lee and I did this. <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, I, I think now, at a, being at a place, a better place of clarity and sort of um, fortitude. Uh, yeah, I think if it grabs me, if, if if I have that same feeling and that same really answer to prayer, because it was a peace that I had about doing this, uh, then yeah, I, I I'll do a few more. But I am very interested in actually. Um, co-writing, co-producing, co-directing. So I've started working on some things. Uh, yeah, because I have a desire to tell. See, a like story. See, selfish. That's just pure <laughs> selfish. Not greedy. Like you say, I'm greedy. You tell me I'm greedy. <laughs> you're greedy. Just making everything up. Just gonna start directing <laughs> stuff, producing, uh, writing. Like you, you said, know, it's creative. I like I, to. Make art I get it. I see, listen. I ain't faulting you. I'm just saying people are gonna be like Andrew Day, <laughs> just scooping up everything. It's greedy. <laughs> yeah, you, you be greedy, but I I'll appreciate take it. that. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I do. I have a desire. I think that if if I have a desire to tell our stories, mm -hmm. you know, um, then I should tell them. You know, it's like if you have the means and you have the vision. In to, to, to start doing it and I may not have the experience but other people do and I can't wait to collaborate with great people on the writing with great people on the producing and directing side awesome. but you know I, I think the, the internet went crazy last year right when they found out Beethoven was actually African you know what I mean but mm -hmm. there is a need by, by yeah. <clears throat> overarching white society to to suppress our stories and to change the narrative so desperately you go to such great lengths so I think we have to go to even greater lengths in order to dismantle the system to to tell these truths and to get these stories out here. So we should truly see a saturation of black and minority stories because they have historically told, you know? I'll definitely take it. Yeah. Right. Last question for you, because we ran out of time, but I need the last question. Something you'll take with you from Billie Holiday, because her spirit is in you. Yeah. Now she 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 live in there. What's yeah. one thing you'll take with you forever, no matter what, because of your work here? Uh well, everything, first of all, because when that woman lays hold, boy, she don't let go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I was like, you could ask anybody, ask Diana, ask Audrey. When she gets in there, she is in there. Yeah. But um, I think the thing that I will take from Billy is her fight and her strength. At least I hope that's what I take from her. 
Because again, you know, those are broad shoulders. This was alone. She didn't have a family except for those people she chose to have around her. She didn't have children. She didn't have, I mean, her motivating factor was solely to do what was right and to be liberated. Uh, so I hope, I hope I take that strength and I hope I take that magnetism. You know, there was something that, there's a great book if you ever get a chance to read, it's called With Billy. It's just stories of people who had encounters with her and mm -hmm. they're so struck. They, I mean, they remember virtually every detail, you know, and, and um, there was something about her. She was so not judgmental and she so received and loved and celebrated people as they were in that moment of their life and just gave them a safe space to just be. So I, I hope that I, I carry that, that with me in, in well, forever. Yeah. You have the magnetism. So you already got <laughs> that. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for, for talking with me and just being as amazing as you are. Thank, thank you. you to the Miami Film Festival for getting yeah. us together and congratulations on everything that's, that you're getting here and that will be coming to you in the future. Uh, you're a blessing. Thank you so yeah. much, Bridget. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you. you.